Can your garden completely transform your feng shui? Hey, hey everyone, Amanda here. And today I'm so excited to share with you an interview that I did with a local landscaper and patio designer that I work with here in Nashville. The reason that I wanted to have her on is that in feng shui, our patios and our gardens and our nature scapes that we build around us are so important. That's right, they actually boost your feng shui. They enhance how we feel and they change our personal chi. If we're down and out or feeling a little bit blue, nature can actually lift you up. It can actually increase your vibration so that you're in more of that above the cross feelings rather than the below the cross emotions. You know how I always talk about that? What Beth is so great about is that she's a horticulturist. She's been doing and playing with plants for many, many years. And so she has this connection with the plant kingdom like no person I've ever met before. And what's great about Beth is that because she does have this connection with nature, she has a true understanding of how to get you to get a patio space or a garden space or something that can really transform your space, whatever that looks like for you. Even if you have a little tiny balcony, she has this natural gift to be able to give you a space that can really uplift your outdoor experience. And I think that's something that's so great about what Beth does is that she has a connection with nature that a lot of us miss or maybe take for granted. She literally has her hands in the dirt every day and she's literally speaking to the wisdom of nature and when it comes to feng shui, that's one of the most important things that we can do to really uplift our spirits and really feel elevated and good. It's one of the best things that you can do is go for a walk, hug a tree, hang out on your balcony, your patio, your garden, whatever it is that you have. Today, we're going to talk about how she got into this line of work, what exactly plants in nature can do for us, and easy ways that you can start incorporating more nature into your life, no matter the amount of space that you have. All right, are you ready? Let's do this. Hey, hey everyone, welcome to Home Energy Design. I'm your host, Amanda Gates, and I'm really excited. Today, my guest is Beth from Teacup Gardener. Hello. And she is actually here in Nashville and she helps uh, people who don't have a green thumb like me actually have beautiful, amazing gardens. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So how did you get into, I assume that you've always had this green thumb. You've had a green thumb probably your whole life and love plants, but how did you get into uh, gardening and, and doing it for a living? Well, I studied horticulture in college and I moved to Nashville to be an intern at Cheekwood uh, in 1990 and got to Nashville and never looked back. So here and I Cheekwood am. Cheekwood is one of the most beautiful gardens. It is in, pretty there. Uh, Nashville. It, it's really a, a really inspiring place. It's a, it's a plantation, right? Did it used it to be was a, a, I don't think it's fair to say plantation. It's a house from the 1930s. The Cheeks owned it. They're the heirs to the Maxwell house. The coffee. Coffee, coffee that's Fortune right. and um, Holda Sharp. Uh, she was a Cheek. It was her parents' home and then uh, she inherited it and turned it into a botanical gardens and fine arts center. So. so what made you go into horticulture? I mean, obviously you love plants. Uh, that is about it right there. When I was a little kid, I'm from Northern Ohio. There's a place called Kingwood Center. I can remember going there on field trips in school, riding a bus over there. And I've just have always felt very attracted and close to plants. I love their company. Oh, I love that. As you all know, I talk to my plants. All of my plants have names. Beth has been out on my patio, and I, I, exp I always say to her, like, this is Edgar, this is Fiona. She, I, you probably have no idea who I'm talking about, but I name <laughs> all my plants. <laughs> In fact, uh, David, uh, my other half, is always like, which one's that? <laughs> <laughs> um, so how long have you had Teacup Gardener? Um, I, uh, about... 1992, I suppose, is Long a fair starting date for that. Um, anybody who's ever worked for a museum knows that the pay is not that great. 
uh, almost right off the bat, I had to start taking private customers in private gardens uh, to supplement my horticultural intern salary. So I just went the way of the other kind of green and started having uh, customers and taking care of gardens on a daily basis. And then those clients turned into regular clients year long. And then uh, my husband and I are business partners. Robert Edwards and I built a design and build end of the maintenance end of the business. So that's how we are moving forward as design, build, and maintenance. Mm, I love that. And I think that uh, you had mentioned a, a minute ago about how you've always been drawn to plants and, and they've always made you feel good and you've always had a, a strong relationship to them. What has been some transformations that you've seen? I mean, I know from my own experience, I call this my Super Bowl. It's, it's uh, early spring here in Nashville, and um, I get so excited about mm -hmm. my patio. Um, we have so many things that we need to be doing for the house, like unsexy things. And I like just kind of pretend those aren't there because it's patio season. Absolutely. I love my garden. I love my plants. But what are some things that you've seen as far as some of the clients that you've worked with, the transformations that have occurred around beautiful plantscapes and patios and gardens and things like that? Well, it's pretty amazing to take a blank slate, nothing on it, or what's there is not satisfactory, and making it just absolutely beautiful, honed to the person's taste. What you have on your patio is not necessarily what I have on my patio. Everybody's different. Mm -hmm. We want different things out of our private spaces. And to work with the person very, very closely and get it right is very fulfilling. It's, and even not getting it quite right and then the ability to grow the friendship by getting the plants right has been very rewarding for me. Yeah, I think one of the, the great things about being able to work with you is that uh, David and I have had our patio for about five years now, and so um, I don't feel like I have a green thumb, um, but I love plants. Oh my God, I love my plants. And so I haphazardly, the first year, I just went to the nursery and just bought all these beautiful things that just made my heart sing, loved my garden, and then it all died because of the season and right. um you know i think one of the great things about working with you is this introduction to the idea that we can have perennials and we can use other things that are year-round that still create a beautiful garden year-round and then add in the annuals and kind of add to it so i think that that's been one of the greatest gifts for me is to be able to see how I can, you know, maybe be a green thumb. <laughs> you have empowered me. So that's good. That's fantastic. Um, so what's that like for you to, you know, you have this vast amount of knowledge uh, about plants and what they love and what they enjoy and being able to, um, like for someone like me, I mean, you rocked my world when you said that I could have trees on my patio. <laughs> I mean, that's like, you know, a gift from God right there. Um, you know, what's that like being able to uh, come in with this vast amount of knowledge and, and be able to uh, really give those gifts to people of, you know, things that I didn't know that I could have trees on my, my patio, to be able to gift that knowledge to them that they can have something like that? Well, it's real tricky to get it honed just right so that what I say is valuable to the person I'm speaking to, because I could be talking a talk that belongs at someone else's house. So I have to make sure that I'm striking the right chord or the vast amount of knowledge is, just falls away. If I'm not saying the right things, then I've missed my mark. So it's important to ask the right questions in the beginning, let the prospective client do a lot, most of the talking. Otherwise I talk over and I miss these real important cues that I otherwise, if I had been quiet and listened, I would have picked up on immediately. That way my response is appropriate and the client can tell I'm listening and not that I showed up with this prepared speech that I was going to do this wonderful thing with complete disregard to what the client wants. I think that, um, I feel like a lot of people have lost their love affair 
with nature and really lost their love affair with this beauty that really surrounds us and take it for granted. You know, I think that, that we have so many beautiful things around us. And I just heard this story the other day um, about a, a monk who is a Buddhist living in, um, he just got transferred to New York and he was walking along uh, this pathway that had a river next to it. And this amazing thing happened where all of these uh, birds came over, flew very close to a runner and then kind of dipped down and went up. And he was just, you know, he's a Buddhist, so he knows to stop and really enjoy nature. And all of these people around him were on their phones <laughs> and missed the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And so he just kind of stopped in his tracks and was like, oh my God, what a gift from God. This is so beautiful and this is so amazing and nature. So, and, and he wanted to share it with the people around him. And so he stopped and was, you know, looking for, did you see that? Did you see that? And nobody was paying attention. And I feel like that's happening more and more where people are really losing that love affair with nature. And so what do you say to a person? I think that for me, my biggest fear was just intimidation. I was, I was really scared to attempt um, what if I harm the plant? What if I don't get the right plant? What if I, you know, and, and I have, I've definitely had my um, issues where I've planted the wrong thing or I've killed something, which I feel bad about. How do you kind of get over that fear and just start to have that, you know, get your hands dirty and, and get in there and, and start having a connection with nature? There is a connection between human beings and the soil and there is a connection between human beings and plants. We are linked permanently because we exhale CO2 and plants exhale oxygen. So we can't live on this earth without each other. And I think often just reminding people that we are connected and we need each other helps them step back a minute, put the phone down and think about the world around them. But some people will perhaps always take it for granted. Uh, it is the backdrop of their lives. But the person that I'm trying to connect with is the one who's paying attention. And I think people like us who pay attention to the environment around us sort of have to fill in the gaps for other folks and answer a lot of questions, even if the questions aren't asked about why plants, why plant trees along the, the interstate, you know, why, why plant a tree there when you're just going to have to clean up the leaves, why plant grass seed, you're just going to have to mow it. And sort of set an example so that people say, oh, that's pretty. I think I can do that at my house. Yeah, I think that that's been the, the greatest thing is just being empowered and, and really just trying. Like just, okay, I, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm just going to mm -hmm. try. And I also feel a little bit socially responsible as, you know, I get more educated about sustainability and this idea of what we're doing to our planet um, while one tree may not make a difference, I do feel better being able to have a garden that is a perennial garden that is, you know, can rather than I feel terrible when my plants die every, uh, you know, October, November. And I, I love the beauty of annuals, but I also have kind of a ping in the back of my heart that I would love to be able to contribute to this idea of what we can do for our planet and our, uh, you know, uh, mother earth. And so, what are some of your thoughts around how, you know, I, I can't imagine with you being so close to plants and, you know, being so close to the, the uh, plant kingdom, seeing what people are really doing to Mother Earth and to nature and, you know, how do you help educate people from that aspect of what a garden can really do and how it can change? I realize my three trees won't make a difference, but I feel like they do. <laughs> well, your three trees make a difference in that your quality of life is improved by surrounding yourself with plants. And if I can convince as many people as possible that their quality of life would be better if they either planted plants or if they went to places where plants are, then I feel like I've done a good job. And it's that inkling of awareness that gets people to sort of turn a corner about how we can live together and have uh, good lives for the plants and for us. And if they just take a little bit of interest, even if it's just to go enjoy a bulb display or even if it's to go enjoy a, a show about botanical prints, it clicks in their head, wow, these are plants. I didn't I'm surrounded by plants. I didn't realize that. 
and the outward effort is to get yourself surrounded by plants and, and realize how you feel when you're with them. It's a lot like being able to recognize the child within and that, that playful side mm -hmm. and plants are our playmates because so often other human beings say, oh, that's crazy. Why do you want to do that? You know, oh, you're filthy, you know, that kind of thing. But if you can have this playful attitude, I think people say, oh, that looks like fun. I think that's one of the best things is it really is fun and we do have this connection to nature. I, I definitely feel a difference where my energy system is and how I feel in the summer versus the winter when there's nothing out on my patio and I have nothing green to look at and it, it's interesting because in feng shui plants are so important and we can actually use plants in nature as adjustments to uplift our personal chi or energy systems and our homes and, and we can use plants in a lot of beautiful ways and so I think it is really a callback to who we are instinctually it's it's getting in in uh, connection with those natural rhythms of mm -hmm. who we are at the core um, and I, I definitely resonate with what you're saying about how it makes us feel um, I think that botanical prints you know can definitely uh, uplift us but there's nothing like being able to walk in nature I feel like you can be so stressed out and have so many things on your mind and you go and take a walk on the beach or you go and walk in a garden or even someplace like Cheekwood and you totally feel transformed. You must be high all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, you, you must have this. What is it like for you if you're not around plants for any period of time? Do you feel a difference in how you feel? I don't know anymore because I've been at this for so long that, and I have a big garden at home. I work last night when I got home from work, I was outside till the very last minute tucking things in the ground, getting the, just the next little bit done at home. So I do realize that in my leisure time, I used to love to go to the beach and visit friends at the beach. And now I say to myself, I would much rather spend, if I had a week off, what would you do? I would much rather spend that week in my own garden, getting things straightened around or just sitting, mm. just sniffing, just crawling around on my hands and knees. And not so much, it's not that I don't enjoy the beach anymore, it's just that I feel so um, connected in a way that I, I give to the garden and the garden gives back to me. And just by growing, just by doing what it's supposed to do. And that makes me feel really happy. So I, in that way, I've, I've been changed or transformed that I, now when I think, oh, how would I spend a week? And I realize it would be a staycation versus go see friends I haven't seen for a couple of years. So if that's not a testament for getting outside and getting in nature, I don't know what is. I have some rapid fire questions for okay. you that I think that are going to be really, really fun. If you had a conversation with an elder tree, what would you hope to learn? You probably have, you probably have conversations with trees all the time. <laughs> um, how, how are you putting up with us? How do you stand us? That would be a great conversation. Okay, what plant do you covet but can't seem to grow? Oh. You probably can grow everything. Uh, I would say bay, the culinary herb. The, um, I have done a good job killing that <laughs> frequently. I really like to cook, and I have uh, done a number on, on my bay trees more than once. So. Oh, no. Okay, if you could take out a billboard on the side of the road that one million people would see, what message would you want to share? Um, plant one plant a day. Mm, I love that. Okay, and if you could leave the audience with one thing today as far as um, getting over the hump, you know, and I, I can definitely speak from experience because I've definitely been intimidated around plants and, and getting the garden right. But if you could leave the audience with something today um, to encourage them or to get them uh, outside and doing something, what would that be? It's not hard. It's just hard work and it's a process. And frequently the hands answer the questions that the mind cannot. So if you get out, get busy, get digging in the dirt. A lot of the stress and anxiety of everyday life just falls away. I love that. 
Well, I would like to thank Beth for coming on the show today. Like I said, she is here in Nashville. So if you are a Nashville gardener or would like to be a Nashville gardener, I'm not a gardener. I try, I, I try to be, but I am not. You're but doing a great job. <laughs> My heart You're is doing definitely a great job. It. My heart is definitely in it. But Teacup Gardener. Yes, ma'am. Um, and what is your website? Uh, teacupgardener.com. So if you are triple in, W's in the front of that, triple W's in the front of that. So if you're interested in working with Beth, what I love about working with Beth is that it, she does really empower you to, like you said, get your hands in the dirt, get out there. And, um, she has really encouraged me to just not approach it with fear. Just, you know, get my ass out there, start putting my hands <laughs> in the dirt. Um, you've encouraged me. I'm so excited. Good. I get to have trees on my patio this year. Um, which I think is really empowering. Um, but I, I think that um, one of the things that I, I hope with this uh, video and this audio is that I encourage you to be stewards of our planet, stewards of our trees and the nature around us. It's so important for our health and well-being and, and how we feel. You spoke about how great it can make us feel. Um, and I hope that I have motivated you to, even if you have a small little tiny balcony, um, are there any things that you could recommend as far as small little balconies that they can maybe uh, play with or experiment with that maybe would be basil's a great one. Basil grows all the time. <laughs> yeah, I would encourage anyone to grow plants that they can cook with because it, then the message really hits home of the usefulness and the purposefulness of gardening. And that's kind of step one. And then if you can move more to the absurd, it feels even better that you just do it for pure pleasure. Yeah, it feels really good, but I will say that um, one of the first things that I ever grew was basil, and it was hardy, it sprouted up like crazy, it was healthy, it did well, and I could cook with it, and so I did. I felt very encouraged that I could actually use what I was growing, and that I did it all by myself. I did it from seeds, so that was really, really exciting. Good job. Um, so that's, that's really um, encouraging if you're new to it, but even if you do have a small balcony, I encourage you to get out there and have some pots and um, just really putting your hands in the dirt and uh, really experiencing the care that goes into watering and nurturing a plant. There's something I think that's said to that too. Um, if you care for something and, and watch it bloom and, and the gifts that it gives you, it's just, it's heartwarming and it will really open you up. So I encourage all of you to do that. And again, if you are interested in working with Beth, you can find her at teacupgardener.com. Thanks everyone for joining us on Home Energy Design today. My name is Amanda Gates. If you like the show, be sure to click the subscribe button below. You can also find more information on our website at gatesinteriordesign.com. We will have show notes on Beth along with her website and information. And you can also reach out to us at letschat at thegatescompany.com.